Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Monday, April 5th, 2021, regular council meeting of the City of Delaware Beach. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God. Please call the roll. Council Member Robin Aki? Here. Council Member Frank Baker? Here. Council Member Glenn Gunn? Here. Council Member Leslie Montero? Here. Council Member Rita Spoke? Here. Vice Mayor Dave Gaddis? Here. Mayor Joseph Manzo? Here. City Manager Lynn Reeves? Here. And City Attorney Fred Riley? Here. And Glenn Gunn is joining us on the telephone, correct, Patty? Uh, on Zoom, okay, very well. Just want to record that. Okay, first item of business um, is the approval of the agenda. Do I have a motion? So moved. Moved by Dave Gaddis. Second? Second. Second. Lesnar and Tara? Any discussion? Not on council? I can't see the Zoom, so I, I, is Patty, are you monitoring that? Yes. Okay, Glenn Gunn has no comments? I just wanted to make sure that we have the information to gender with respect to the advisory board. Can you hear that? I, th I heard that. I think I know. I think you heard that there was an application. Um, Glenn, Glenn is, I think Glenn, if I say this wrong, just uh, let me know. I believe Jody Shirley placed an application this afternoon for the uh, citizen advisory board, and I was just informed tonight that John Hansig also placed an application. Did you receive that, Patty? Yes. yes. She's saying yes. So we have two applications. We were going to consider three people. There's five slots. Um, we now have two more people. So the motion would have to be made by someone to amend the agenda to add those two uh, applications so that we can consider all five tonight. So if council, someone on council likes that idea, make the motion. We'll vote on amending it. Then we can take the whole agenda. Mayor, just uh, so you know, there's a sixth application, but it's been held till the Board of Adjustment meets. There's six total applications. Okay. If you apply, you don't have to resign <laughs> until, because they have a, a hearing. So. Okay. Well, here's the thing. I mean, if you vote tonight, we put five people on, then that person would be an alternate. Um, is there a reason? I don't know the person, I don't know the reason, so why does John, John Hayes, uh, because they're having a, a hearing next month, and uh, he felt because of his experience he should go through that and then volunteer to the board. We would have to hold up the board place. Yeah, I mean, that's a little bit of an issue only because what you and I were discussing today regarding the audit committee. So, yeah. so I'm just... I'll, I'll go with whatever council thinks, but I, I just think we should maybe vote on five tonight. I get a nod from Dave Gaddis, Leslie. Uh, if we don't give the, um, the application to the resumes for the other two, do we? Uh, I don't think Patty got an update, did you? I'm, I'm sorry, I can't hear you. You didn't have the applications and resumes for the other two. I have Mr. Hansdick that he just handed in, and I have Mr. Hayes in my office. And how about Jimmy Charlie's? I mean, even though she's a known entity, do we have the resume and application? Um, I emailed that out to council. Okay. Do that. Lynn and I were talking. We might have to do that anyway due to some of the to some of the technicalities. It's not going to mess you up with the audit committee, is it? Okay. Yeah, he's saying no. Uh, yeah, maybe we'll take it to that. But um, why don't we just leave it on the agenda then and table it when we get to it? Then we can go on to six. That's Mayor? Yes. Um, Council Member Gunn. Did you have a comment? No, I I I will I'll accept your I don't say the it's hard to hear him, but I think he said he's okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yes, I, I'm having a hard time hearing him also. Yeah, we could get that microphone up close on that. Um, all right, so we, we'll, we don't have to amend this. We're not, we're, we're going to, I mean, we have everyone's word of honor here. We're going to table that vote when we get to it, okay? That's what we're planning on doing. 
This is where everybody has fair consideration. So then we can approve the agenda as is. We have a motion, we have through discussion. Any other comments on council? Citizens? Back to council. Last word going to uh, Dave Dice. Uh, none. Okay. Uh, so then we can do a voice vote uh, to approve the agenda. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Agenda is approved. Six, five, seven, Okay, the next uh, piece is the citizens' comments. We're going, because of the virus here, we're going to ask that you come up here, um, speak right into this microphone, because the people cannot hear you if you don't keep your mouth like about an inch away. These mics are not that sensitive. Please give us your name, your address. You have three minutes to speak to the council. Please address the council. And please follow the rules of uh, procedure that we have for addressing council, which basically means speak nicely, speak boldly, speak with everyone else. Okay. Anyone would like to speak? I'm not seeing any hands. Okay, so the comments are closed. Number three is the presentation of the Pinellas County Sheriff's Office. Sheriff, we have someone here. Back to another one. <laughs> um, last month, 
more of the pattern's last council meeting, and he gave him a clap, a desk clap, and um, he had one more award and one more uh, accommodation. It's, in Delaware Beach, you don't have a key to the city, you don't have the president's award or anything like that. The highest level of honor that we have in our city is the certificate of accommodation. And I mentioned when we didn't know the results of the election, we said that we thought no one is more deserving than the council members who serve the amount of dedication that they do. Um, if I could give you two of these, I'd give you two of them, because you did this twice. Uh, two, term, two terms, Mark also served on our charter review committee uh, and served on council. It's instrumental in helping with the undergrounding, and I call it your 40-point list of things that had to be done. And he put together with the citizen 40-point list of stuff that had to be done. And I think we've done here about every one of them done between the first council and the second council. So this is well-earned. Congratulations, and it's an honor to serve. Opportunity 
that anybody had to, to study, if you will, under even that setting. So I, the only, I wish I'd known about it earlier, and maybe we could have even arranged to take something like that to show it to other people, because something like that would have been very helpful, I'm sure, you know, to a newcomer. So. Thank you very much, and a compliment. That for newcomers especially, it can be very, very intimidating as a board member. You can be intimidated by the applicant and the audience. So I, I really hope that we continue that. Lynn, thank you for suggesting that we have the training session. Because to my knowledge, we do have another variance coming up soon. Thank you. Well, hang on, just want to make sure for the other comments of council. But just so everybody knows, as Mike said, this is a quasi judicial board. We, they don't report to the council, they're on their own. And like you said, if you get it wrong, then the city can find itself at the wrong side of the lawsuit and all kinds of other problems. They don't get it wrong. So it's a, that's, that's a lot of credit to you and the board. It's a great job. We'll continue council, to do so. Thank you. Council, do we have any other comments? Citizens, any comments? Thank you very much. Carpet Rep Board, do we have someone here? Stop and everything. 
I know there is a budget for this, but is there plans to try and reach out and do similar sponsorships, maybe particularly things like the Jazz Festival and stuff like that? Sure. That's no problem. No one has mentioned it until today. And so we've spent a dollar budget. I have no problem trying to source it out. I've actually had a to be looking to sponsor it. Um, so, yeah, no problem. Council comments? Citizens, any questions? Great, just keep us surprised with how things are going, and you know, you're welcome back there every month if you'd like. We'd like to just hear that minimum quarterly report, so you can just you know, keep us advised how things are going. Thank you. No problem, thanks. My name is Zoning Board. I see some people. JC. Greetings, Mayor, Council, and welcome to the new members of the City Council. I got a call here a few while, uh, while back from Lynn Reeves, and every time I get a call from Lynn, I think, uh-oh. Well, he asked if our committee would assume the code revision and investigation. I pulled the committee consisted of, at that time, Angela Berry and Brenda from Juana Sierra, Wanda, who has been reporting to, uh, to counsel for us because of my absence, and Rudy Davis, and we said yes, we would help out the city. Lord only knows that we didn't realize what size that coat book was. <laughs> we could no, never no, find the attorney. He disappeared. He, uh, <laughs> I'm sure he's very familiar with it. But Lynn asked us to do it, and we met five times. And I can say that all members were present at every meeting. And we spent almost two hours per meeting and submitted the final report to the city uh, on some of the observations and recommendations from our committee. And I know that uh, everyone on the committee gets an attaboy award, I believe me. And Mr. Mayor, this committee was tough. It was a tough assignment, it really was. And I thank them for helping. And our service to the city, we like to do it and we were glad to do it. And if everybody spent as much time as our committee on the city situations, I think we'd be in pretty good shape. I have to thank Lynn Reeves and Patty and Laura for backing us up. Every meeting they were there. And even a person named Marvin used to come in and put needles in me at every meeting. But we survived. And Mr. Mayor, I'm sure you got the final draft, and your committee did. And we were proud to serve the city. Thank you. For me, on behalf of the town, thank you and your committee for all hard work and effort in the middle of a pandemic, nonetheless. Okay, that's exceptional work. I did have a chance to read through it. I, I guess everyone else has tonight. We're not going to debate it all. Um, I had some observations, some questions, things I saw. There was a lot of work that was put into that. Um, and so I think what we're going to probably do is set this up, I spoke with the city manager this morning, we'll probably set it up for a future work session where we can discuss it further and review it. And I also want to let you know, because um, you did another thing that was a tremendous amount of work a year ago, right before COVID hit, you gave us a 90 plus page book um, about different options for this city, all planning options and things. Some was stuff that we're probably never going to do, but some stuff in there that was looking at. Then the virus hit, and then everything you know kind of went kaflooey. But um, we're going to be reviewing that. I want you to know that. But I spoke with the city manager today. We're going to be putting that on the work session. And my new council members are going to hate me. Um, the old ones already do, but that's okay. There's a lot of work to read through all of this stuff. Um, you put it together. We're going to review it, and we're going to give you some opinions and you know and see what we can act and what we can do because you guys put a lot more work in it. So. I don't have any questions for you tonight, per se. I think we may have questions down the road on some of the things, but um, I will open it up to the floor to anybody you know, on the council and then to the citizens. But uh, I want to thank you and the committee for 
that report and from that prior report, and we'll let you know that we will be getting on that pretty quickly within the next month. Thank you. Thank you. And I had my shots. <laughs> I got I'm getting my last one. Anyone else? Hang on, JC. Is there any citizen comments? Yes, Patty? Um, what? Okay, go ahead. Thank you. He's on Zoom. I just wanted to pass on my kudos to the uh, job well done. I think this is the first body of work that I've seen where the entire our future directions and actions to our vision and goals and strategic plan. So it's a really landmark breakthrough for the work that's got to be done. It certainly has a few of uh, various people like Juan was there, who was uh, one of the front ones of the strategic plan and the new games and, and kind of gets all of that stuff. But the coolest one who came to join the work and did a great job on it. I look forward to the people who just works on it. Thanks very much. Thank you. So for those of you who couldn't hear, Glenn Gunn said kudos a couple of times. Excellent job, and that's pretty much that. So. Um, again, Tracy, thank you for the hard work. Can we collect our awards at the door? You can get your awards at the door. The Cadillac is waiting outside for you. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that takes care of the board reports for this month. Next, we go to the So now we go to the consent agenda. The consent agenda is approved in its totality. It's item six and seven. So item six is approval of the March 1st, 2021 City Council meeting minutes. And then item seven is approval of the March 15th, 2021 Special City Council organization meeting minutes. Uh, there's no discussion on this, so we approve it in, in mass. We have a motion. Frank Banker gets the motion. Leslie, second? No, I have a, should I say a Correction to the minutes. Okay. Um, hang on, let me, let me deal with this. Here, here's what we're going to do. Normally, we have to remove it from the consent agenda. Is it something simple that we can, or something that's going to be available? Or? Yes, on the March 1st meeting, item number 7, it says the motion was made to table agenda item number 6. Ah, this is right. <laughs> Yeah. Council, I normally don't like to dispense with rules, but does anyone have a problem with dispensing with the rules for that change? There's no problems whatsoever. Okay, thank you, Leslie. Leslie, if we have that in the future, just say that up front. This way we can keep still with the consent agenda or take it out of the consent agenda for the early issues. No problem. So we got a motion. Leslie's made a second. There's no discussion on it. Again, I'll call the question to approve the consent agenda. And that's approval of item six, um, approval of the March 1st, 2021 City Council meeting minutes, and item seven, approval of the March 15th, 2021 Special City Council organization meeting minutes. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? That's not an opposed, right? right. 7 0 passes. Item six and seven are approved, consent agenda is complete. Okay, now. I'm going to say before we do that, because I'm going to call items 6, 8, and 10. Um, I, it's the time, let me call three of them together. Does anybody have a problem if I call three of them together with the table? Uh, I have the regular agenda. Okay, and so this is where we would have done the appointment of Ron Gigantic, Mark Goldman, and Mark Reisberg. We voted on that. We all agreed that we were going to, because there's uh, three other applications coming in that are not in our packet, that we're going to hold this off till our next meeting. So, uh, Mayor, uh, yes. may I make a suggestion? Um, some of the candidates are here tonight, yes. and it may not be as convenient for them to be here next time. Right. But, uh, I would like to hear their presentation if they would like to speak. Okay. Uh, if, they, if they choose to do so. Here's what we'll do. Let's, um, that's a good suggestion. I just see some of the people here. Let's call each one. Let's get a motion. Let's get a second. They, if they're here, they wish to speak, they can speak, and we can table it back. So we're not going to vote tonight, but we'll remember the presentation, obviously. And if you come tonight, I think that's, that's a good suggestion. Yes. Everybody in favor of doing that? Okay. So let's go with item eight, number one. Uh, item eight is the consideration of 
and appointment of Ron Chigandic to the Citizens Advisory Committee to the Citizen uh, Council appointment of a committee member. First, I'll be a motion. So moved. And a second. Gaddis and Aki. And any council comments first? Ron Chigandic here. Ron, do I speak? Not unless there's questions. Uh, we, and we, I mean, you're welcome to come back when we reschedule it too, so that's up to you. But you're here, we want to give you that opportunity. Yeah, okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. And sorry for this, and we had no last, last minute flood of applicants here. Um, okay, does anyone, anyone want to make a motion to table this? I'll take a motion to table. Okay, uh, halfway. Okay, yeah, you can move the motion. You can take a little bit. Okay, second, all favor table. All right, aye. That's it. Sorry, Ron. <laughs> <laughs> you have to wait a month. Let's take it to the next regular meeting. Next regular or special meeting. If we have a work session, you know, if we have a meeting we can do the past session before and kind of get these approved. Good. Uh, item 9, consideration of appointment of Mark Goldman to the Citizens Advisory Committee. Motion? So we get us. Sorry, Council comments? None. Is Mr. Golden here? Mr. Golden's in the back. Would you like to speak tonight? Uh, no, I'll wait till the uh, first day of the applicants get a chance to speak. He's like the NFL. He is elected to defer, so he's going to uh, wait until the next one. Have a motion to the table? Motion to the table. Okay, got a second. Second. Uh, I'll give the kind of bank card here. Um, all in favor of tabling? Aye. Aye. Pass the 7 0 table. Last, we have consideration, item 10, consideration of appointment of Robert Riceberg to the Citizens Advisory Committee. Motion? So moved. Yes. Second. Robin Hockey. Any council comments? Is Mr. Riceberg here? Mr. Riceberg's in the back. Glad to speak. I will join the other applicants and defer. Please don't feel like to defer until the second quarter. Okay. <laughs> if you tried, hey, <laughs> it was a good suggestion. Uh, you can also make the motion if you Motion to table. There you go. Second. Second to Robin. And all in favor? Aye. Aye. Passes seven to zero. It's table. Sorry, folks. We will get this as soon as we can on the next agenda. Okay. Item eleven. We have to get something. Have to get something done on over here. This is the request. Uh, city manager had a request authorization to utilize excess Bellevue Island Estates underground project funds for loan reduction and to refund and prepay the residents. The description is to utilize the excess project funds to prepay loans in the amount of $330,717.50 and refund $78,479.61 to residents who prepaid in full. I have a motion. Tell me. Rita makes a motion. Second. Second, Dave Gaddis. Rita Swope. I'll defer to the city manager. City manager. Yes, Mayor and Council, this is uh, the undergrounding project, and uh, this morning I got a, an additional $15,000 check to prepay another home. So uh, the motion for the 330, uh, if we can amend that to say $345,866.69, uh, a resident came in this morning, because this is the month they can prepay. Uh, Wait, may I just cut in one second? That's not in the motion itself, so we don't have to amend it. That's just in the description. So you put that out there. I will reread it when we do the description when I call the yeah. question, but we don't need an amendment. Okay. Okay. So uh, the 78000 is explained here. There were 25 prepays, and that will be split up depending on if they had overhead services. So, And I, and I gave you the spreadsheet uh, to kind of over that a little bit with you as far as we will be paying on uh, the loans that A, B, and C, that money will be spread out equally and then they will do a, uh, an updated amortization schedule and that's when we'll determine what the assessments will be reduced by to the people that are uh, paying by assessment. So all I'm asking tonight is to prepay the loan uh, in the amount of 345,866.69 and start the refund process uh, for $78,479.61.
myself, the accountant reviewed it, and then I had a public advisory group who helped us with the loan a couple years ago review it, and that's all the data that was provided to you. So we're comfortable with those numbers, and uh, we'll send a letter to the residents and let them know that, hey, we saved you money, and we're going to give it back to you if you prepay, and your assessment will be adjusted accordingly in next year's taxes. We've said this before, excellent job of making this happen and the cost savings. I only have one question in reading the, in the paperwork and stuff that's with it. Was, you know, once you send these checks out, there's no getting them back, okay? Are we, you know, we, we have assurance, we're positive, we're totally comfortable that this money is ready to be refunded. No one's going to claw anything back, no one's looking for any, you know, your reserves or what have you, right? There, there's nothing. No, no, what, what we, we, if you look in the, uh, We've got a little $5,000 because we pay every year for the attorney to do a resolution and things like that. And when we do the uh, assessment, we'll make sure there's money set aside for that in the assessment number. But uh, I no, I'm comfortable with these numbers. I went to a, a source that actually did the loan. We even talked to Brian Miller Olive, the, the attorneys that did the loan, because I wanted to make sure all my numbers good numbers and uh, my scribble numbers, as I call them, were within a couple blocks of their numbers. So I think we were pretty confident. All right. We are. That's all I have to think. I, I know we're confident. That's like the pilot on the plane telling me he's pretty confident he can land there. <laughs> so yeah, you're no, confident. You're good. Yeah, okay. Confident. Anybody have any questions on council? Yes, right? Um, 170. No, the, the, there, there's a little bit of interest that came from the SBA, but we've been putting it into that account it, as a total. You know, the 400 and, uh, what was it, 409,000. The 409,000, there's been a little interest, and we've been putting it into that account. So that, that's, they are going to get a little bit of interest back. Citizens. Yes. Okay. Anyone else on council? Any Zoom, anything on the Zoom, Patty? Go ahead, okay. I'll uh, open up to the citizens. Citizens, any questions? Back to council. Ms. Smoke has the last word. No, I'm good. Oh, my question. Got it. Okay, so we're, before the board is to request an authorization to utilize excess value island estates underground project funds for loan reduction and to refund prepay residents. That's the motion. Now the description has slightly changed. It's utilized excess project funds to prepay loans in the amount of $345,866 and I think you said 69 cents? Yes, ma'am. That's 69, I can't read my nine and a four. And refund $78,479.61 to residents who prepaid in full. A yes vote gets the city manager to do this. Um, do I have to call this individually? This I can go by the closing group, right? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay. Pass the seven to zero. City manager, you're so authorized. Please move forward. Item 12 is to request authorization to waive additional bid requirements for community center uh, closed circuit TV system and access control system. This was tabled from last month. We were requesting to waive additional bidding to award the $15,672.80 contract to integrated security consultants with the equivalent cameras requested by City Council. Motion? Motion okay. uh, I'm sorry, we'll go to Frank Banker and Dave Gaddis. Thank you, Paul. Thank Yeah, Mayor and Council, this is, we went back because of the uh, high vision cameras, uh, the uh, not NDAA report, and don't ask me what it, the thing is, I'll have to ask any of that. But I've uh, went back to the, the low bidder and asked him to give us a couple prices. They still are, still would be the low bidder, uh, and so instead of rebidding this again, I'm just asking you to waive the additional bidding. In the amount of fifteen thousand six seventy two eighty, we had two options that they sent us. Uh, I did ask 
Vice Mayor Gannis to look at him because he's in this field and he did. You recommended the one we selected. So I'm just asking for council approval. Just for the people who are here for the first time, Council Member Gaff, at the time Council Member Gaff is now Vice Mayor, um, had questions and issues, so we tabled this last month. Um, Dave, I'm going to defer to you and, and see if you're satisfied with this, because I think we were all waiting on your um, stamp of approval before we move forward with it. Yes, I am. Uh, we went back to the uh, bidder uh, who made two suggestions, uh, two different companies, and uh, I did a little, little homework. Uh, one of the companies was relatively new uh, in the market, and whenever I tracked back where they came
So, I'm not telling you what to do, but does anyone want to make a motion? Once, twice, no one. Okay, it'll be, uh, it'll come back in another day. Okay, item 14, consideration of resolution 2021-03, a resolution of the City Council of the City of Delaware Beach, Florida, providing the City Clerk with authority to transmit adopted charter amendments to the Muni Code and the Florida Department of State and establishing an effective date. This gives the City Clerk the authority to transmit charter amendments adopted by the electors of the City for incorporation into the City Charter and Code of Ordinances. This is from the March election. Okay, the other ones are out there right now. Um, so we actually have two sets. So first, do I have a motion? Unless we can tell us making a motion. Second? Second. Second. Oh, is that right up? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Leslie? Um, I think this is just something we need to do, obviously. And, um, and I see no, no issue with it at all. In the state and the state. So there we go. You can't do it. We have to speak right to the mic. Um, yeah, I think this is uh, you know, just a very, a very simple thing. We have to convey them to the state and as well as to beauty code so they are available online. So that, this is a, the voters have spoken and the charter amendments have passed. This makes it official by putting it in the beauty code and the state has to approve. Patty, can I ask you, I mean, I think we're still waiting on the ones from November. How long does this process take, these folks? No, we have November, so as soon as this is approved, I can send it to the state. How long does that take? Well, um, I really can't say. I mean, the last time we did it was 10 years ago, so I don't know how long it would take now. But it took them like four months to approve this from the right? It took a while, yeah. All right, so. Okay, anyway, I, this has to be done. Any other questions on council? Citizens, any comments? Leslie, you have the last word? No question? Okay, so call the question on item 14. Consideration of resolution 2021-03, a resolution of the city council of the city of Delaware Beach, Florida, providing the city clerk with authority to transmit adopted charter amendments to the code and the Florida Department of State and establish an effective date. This gives the authority of the city clerk to transmit charter amendments adopted by the electors of the city or incorporation into the city charter and public ordinances. I'm adding that this is from the March election. A yes vote allows her to proceed. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Mayor, yes. can I do a roll call on this one? Okay, sure. Thank you. You'll call the roll? Yes. Council Member Gunn? Aye. Council Member Aki? Councilmember Baker? Aye. Councilmember Notero? Aye. Councilmember Swope? Aye. Vice Mayor Gaddis? Aye. Mayor Manta? Aye. So it's still 7 to 0, passed unanimously, and you may proceed. Aye. Thank you. Item 15. Consideration of selecting council members as a voting delegate and an alternate voting delegate number one, and an alter alternate voting delegate number two for the Barrier Islands Governmental uh, uh, Council, that's the big C. We have to nominate and elect the voting delegates and members. Um, so, do we have a motion? So moved. Yes. Second? Second. 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 Okay. I've put my name in for this. I've represented us for the last two years. Traditionally, the mayor is the representative. Um, other people go. I know uh, Mark Dean used to go all the time, and um, Leslie and Carol had seen there. Wanda Schreer was there uh, from time to time. So anyone's welcome to go. The big seat just asked that the mayor is to represent, so I, I'm more than willing to continue to do that. Um, I get my second shot tomorrow. I'll be going back in person again. Um, they have given that option. I've stayed away from it until now, but um, I will be going back in person. So um, I'll be more than happy to represent the city. I, we really need two other people, though, for alternates. So, so. I'll volunteer for alternates. Leslie, okay. And Fred. Okay. Um, Council Member Gunn? Aye. Council Member Aki? Aye. Council Member and. Uh, Oh, it'd be good to get to know the neighbors. Uh, I see that you're on the uh, uh, you're 
representing us on a number of committees. And uh, I'd like to put my name in the hat. Board of Exceed? Yes. Primary? Yes. All right, so let's just be primary then. Mayor? Yes. Council Member Gunn had a comment? Sure. You know, I just want to say that this is very important. We have the traditional working relationship with our the neighboring cities. And I think the person who represents better views can't be encumbered by controversial public relations issues and legal action. So my tendency is to lean towards the first word to press out and support the APA as a more time and challenging tradition. But I think uh, we really need to get some considerations here on those, for those reasons. Thank you. Anyone else on council? Um, yes, I reviewed at some of these council or some of these positions, and it uh, looks like all the towns do have a Thank you, I appreciate that. I, 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 Frank, your observation is correct. And by the way, Frank was at a couple of our meetings. Um, it's pretty amazing to just got collected and come to a few meetings already. I saw him some close to the big cities. Um, just the, the power of the big C is the mayor standing behind it. If everyone saw our press conference about home rule last year, it was the mayors who stood up, and it was all mayors who stood up. So it's not that other people aren't welcome. They absolutely are welcome to be there. But I'll tell you what Bill Queen told me when I was first elected. He said, we want the mayors. Now, Bill Queen's a very influential member of the city. So, um, but I will abide by whatever this city says. I'm more than willing to, uh, you know, I'll continue to participate in the big seat, but I think they want the power of the mayors. And, uh, and that's my, my personal feelings are, have nothing to do with the way I handle myself professionally on this. I will work with anybody on the big seat for the goal of pretty much preserving the home rule that, that we all really covet here. We don't like Tallahassee sometimes you know, telling us that we're going to have businesses or um, rental businesses in the next door to us. That's what the big C fights for. And the power of that is having the mayors to speak. I know it sounds funny because we're all equal on this council. There's seven people, we all have an equal vote. The mayor really is no different than anyone else. But the perception outside is the mayor is the all important person. That's what was told to us at the at the emo training, that's what was told here, and um, so that's that's the political end of it. So um, I'll keep my name in it, and uh, we'll see how the vote goes. Anyone else? Anyone in the city? And I will bring it back for a vote. We're going to vote on the primary first, um, so uh, you might as well do a roll call, and um, we'll vote it's either for myself or for Dave Gaddis. Manza. Pardon? I'm voting for Mayor Manza. Councilmember Baker. Mayor Manza. Councilmember Gunn. Councilmember Gaddis, please. Councilmember Machero. Gaddis. Councilmember Slow. Vice Mayor Dave Gaddis. Vice Mayor Gaddis. Gaddis. Manzo. So it's four to three. Dave Gaddis will be our primary um, representative. Secondary representative, we had Leslie Natero. And Frank, did you say yes? Frank? Okay. Anyone else want to go for it? It says delegate number one and delegate number two is their preference. No. We'll have to go on one at a time then. So the first person in the list is going to be the one that they go to. If you know if Dave can't make it, then they're going to go to number one, and they're going to go to number two. So who wants to be one? Who wants to be two? I'd like to be one. And so, ladies first. Okay. All right. So um, we'll do uh, alternate number one. We have Leslie Natero. All we don't have to do it by person. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Seven to zero. You're the ball alternate. Frank Bankard um, is alternate number two. All in favor? Aye. 
Aye. Seven to zero. Brent is open at number two. All right, uh, number 16, consideration of selecting a council member as voting delegate to the Florida League of Cities um, to nominate and elect a voting delegate. This, you, um, last year they didn't have a convention, so if you go to the convention or last year they did it online, you cast the votes. It's pretty much a ministerial thing. The votes are going to pass, but somebody has to count them. Um, somebody has to cast them on behalf of each city. So um, first, we, let's get this on the uh, agenda. We have a... Um, a motion. So moved. Yes. And second? Second. Discussion. I put my name in for this. Um, I expect to go to the convention if they hold it in person. So last year I went virtually. So uh, it doesn't matter who does this. So. I, I nominate. Okay, thank you. Second. Thank you. Anyone else wish to be nominated? Okay, then let's call the question. So this is consideration of selecting me as your voting delegate for the Florida League of Cities. All, uh, yes vote uh, elects me. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone Aye. opposed? Seven to zero. Thank you. I will uh, I have a convention. I'll be there. Okay, number 17. Consideration of selecting a council member as um, voting delegate for the Sun Coast League of Cities. Nominate and select the voting delegate. This is number 17. Um, first, let's get it on the agenda. Motion? So moved. Yes. Second? Second. Is that real? Hard to hear from that side, but. Okay, um, okay I, put, I placed my name in on this. I've been doing this also for the last two years. Some Coast League of Cities has um, monthly meeting. They do more lobbying in uh, Tallahassee and kind of more concerned with the. Uh, and kind of their agenda, so um, there's a, a monthly, monthly afternoon meeting with them, and uh, I don't attend every one of those, I try to attend as many as I possibly can. So um, I'd like to be considered on that. Anyone else? I would like to nominate them. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Anyone else? Okay, and I'll pull the question. Uh, I, I didn't ask for citizen comments. Are there any citizen comments on I'll, I'll look back and then make a virtual act? Are there any citizen comments on either? I think on 16, I think on 17. Okay, let's call the question then. Uh, consideration of selecting council member myself as voting delegate for the Sun Coast League of Cities and get on my um, you know my uh, assurance that I will attend as many of these as possible. Again, with COVID, I think this year we'll be able to do a lot more than we did last year. So uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Seven to zero. Thank you. Uh, we moved on to item 18. One, we're one hour into this. So we're moving along pretty quickly. Does anybody need a break? We go move to the end. Mayor? Yes. Jody Shirley is around. Did you I see Jody Shirley, Shirley has come in. Okay. Let's do. Anybody have an objection? I can do more down. Let's do it. Jody?
making the island smaller. I don't know if that's a benefit or not. I uh, just wanted to get feedback from you or take the whole island out and pave it over. Now, I did talk to a, a couple residents that mentioned that maybe the island needs to stay there because it'll stop people from going into their driveway. It makes them certain. So, uh, just want to get some feedback from the council. What your thoughts are on that? And, uh, and have you pulled the residents of Harrison? I mean, they're the you know, it's, it's one thing for me to say it, but I don't live there. What are they? Doing? So, well, I've only talked to a couple of them because it, it just recently came up because we're paving it. We put a letter out that we're going to pave the street. Uh, the the ones that are really concerns are, are the people at the end, and we, we can do a quick poll and find out what they say. And if they say leave it as it is, then we'll leave. Okay with the or take it out entirely or whatever. And I know Mr. Moss is here, and he's one of the residents that thinks it needs to be smaller. Uh, I'm kind of in the middle, I can pave it or leave it as it is. You can do either of the three, right? So, I mean, let's, if we can maybe, you know, if council agrees, if we can get a survey, like explain to them what it means, smaller, I mean, you know, I don't know if you're talking 10 feet, 5 foot, 2 foot. You well, know, that means you're going to have to tear out the whole island to make it smaller. You, you, you just can't cut off part of the curb and put it, put it back around. Uh, if you like, uh, maybe one day this week I can just pick you up and we ride out and knock on some doors if you've got time. We'll, we'll, uh, uh, we'll get that done. And, and I'm going to be out of the office the rest of the week for family issue. So, uh, but I can get Kyle to do that with you. Perfect. So I'll, I'll tell him in the morning. So let's see what the rest of us think. Yeah, Mr. Moss, did you have anything you wanted to say about it? Since you're the one that brought it up most recently. Right, can I just hang on one second? Council. Oh, no, is that okay? Uh, no, I, I don't mind. He's here, and let's, I'd, I'd like to hear from him. Um, does anybody have, does, he, it's, it's Lynn's time right now. We have a resident who would like to speak on this very topic. Does anybody have a problem with bringing him up at this point? No, Mr. Moss, right here. Yes, Mr. Moss, you have Thank you. 
pictures as you see them know that they'll be coming out and survey them. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, okay, thank you, Lynn. 7th and 8th Street project is wrapping up. Uh, we'll be doing a walkthrough not this week but next. Uh, you know, and they, they've got sod to put down and things, but the, the painting is done, the curves are done, uh, the uh, check valve's been put in, the new pipe's been put in, so uh, that is moving forward. I have to open the park up soon because we still have a sign that says it's closed and there was still a lot of containment within there. Well, there's well, still. Like a week ago, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. There, there's still, uh, their silt barrier still out in the water until they get that sod in and stuff. After that's done, then we'll reopen it. One thing that you do need to know we're going to have the dock that's there uh, needs to be removed and we'll have to budget something in the next fiscal year to put it back. It's currently. Uh, after going through the project and looking at it, we had an engineer look at it and it's, it's in bad shape underneath. So we'll, we'll you know, remove it, but the boat ramp will still be there and then we'll put something to budget for the next fiscal year to refill it. Is it the pilings? That's bad because the top of it looks fine. I mean, it's no, it's the pilings. It's the pilings. Yeah, underneath the wood's pretty, pretty rough. So, so uh, I received the uh, Cost estimate from Duke for undercrafting Gulf Boulevard last on April Fool's Day, and I thought it was an April Fool's joke because <laughs> it was $5.5 million. And um, I've sent them an email back, and I'm going to have a little more discussion with them about doing some things like we did with Bellevue Estates Island. We kind of hired our own person to put conduit in and things of that nature and save the residents a lot of money. We'll, we'll go f further with that. The kitty's only about four million that we're getting from the county, so uh, we need some negotiations. So we'll resolve that. Uh, only last thing uh, is work session. Do you want to do one in April? Uh, things we talked about were the review of the code enforcement, uh, looking you know at the planning stuff. And what I'll do is I'll ask Patty to, to the new council members. I'm sure they haven't seen that book. We'll need to send that to, to uh, Frank and Leslie. I'm sure everyone else has it. You've got it all filed, Frank. Right? We're getting the words out. Everybody's laughing. You might have to resend it all. Oh, okay. We'll just do that, Patty, to redo the book. We want to um, set up a I mean, I, I, there's a lot to go through. I, I wouldn't put too much else on this because I could spend two sessions just going through the planning board's first report, let alone code. So, um, you want to split it up? I mean, it's, it's waited this long, we can wait a month, but I don't think we're going to get into budget season real soon. Here, so. Yeah, and, and the, the code enforcement things really, what the council needs to do is tell us what you. Give us your feedback on the report, the things you want to change. We can start on that. We can, you know, get the city attorney to start writing the ordinances to update those things. Some of those things in there, in the recommendations, those are very simple to fix. And if the council blesses them, we'll, we'll be able to move them forward. But it's not going to be a process that you can uh, do like that. Uh, you know, we may go through half the report and say, okay, these things are fine. Let Fred go ahead and start on it, and then we'll go back. It's kind of like the charter room. It's how we did that last year. So uh, we could start with that, send the, the other report out, and then schedule something. Uh, this year for the budget, as I mentioned, we gave you the calendar. I'm looking at starting the budget work sessions in June to try to give us a little bit of head start with the council. So you are packed in where you got two or three budget meetings within a couple of years. I mean, as I remember the planning board suggested the binder, they didn't recommend most of them. They just gave, we asked them to break outside the box, so they came up with some stuff that I think some of it is really thinking outside the box, but we're probably not going to do it. So we might be able to go through it fairly quickly. I think when we get something like the marina, that's going to be a discussion, you know, so we, we might want to set up a night just for that. My suggestion would be maybe Start with that code one this month, give you uh, Frank um, and Leslie a chance to go through that 90-page book, because I've already read it, and, um, you know, 
maybe hit that next month. That, that's just my suggestion. I'll take it in any order. It doesn't matter. And so whatever. Counts. Well, some of the some of the code things, you know, the plan, the code review report. Some of those things are going to be the council's going to say, yeah, let, let's go ahead and change those the wording or this word or maybe one word. Uh, so those are simple things that, that can probably move rather quickly, and we can start uh, with the city attorney rewriting, you know, the ordinance to replace them. So I would agree with you that the code thing. Maybe and we'll include sign movements in there. Fred Riley sent us each a copy of the sign movement suggested as there's quite a bit of discussion on that. Well, maybe not, but there's there's quite a bit of law on that before we can come up with it. So right. um, want to pick a date? Well, usually we do it on the third Monday, which is the nineteenth. Uh, I don't know what everyone's schedule is. Mayor, I'm, I'm not available until the twenty second. So I'll be nineteenth, twenty first, twenty second, I'm not gonna be there. I could come telephonically, but um, I have comments for sure on that stuff, so I'd so, like to be here. So the pleasure of the council. The next Monday is the 26th. 26th? 26th at 6 p.m.? Okay, so that'll be there in another bunch of time. So we'll confine it pretty much, unless something else comes up, confine it to the sign ordinance and the code. And then next month, we're going to hit that uh, the planning book. And then we'll plan that on the third Monday. Yes, I think if uh, you can plan whatever that third Monday is in May, I'm not sure. I'll talk about it. Around the 17th or 18th. Okay. We have a couple months off with no work session, so we, yeah, we have to get back to it. Okay. And that's all I have. And uh, the um, Patty did a lot of work for searching. I just want to say the, the Muni code that came back from, from uh, Muni code. We're getting ready to send that that portion from the November election to the state, uh, and I think you know it took them a little while to decipher it and whatever they do to it, their massage. Uh, but uh, Patty reviewed it and everything looks good, so we'll be forwarding that for the state to sort of put our November is in And then March is we're starting the process. And I pray, if you have nothing else to do, I don't want to lose sight of the fact that the next election is the final installments of the code uh, of the charter review recommendations. So we've got plenty of time. It's not till next March, but I'm just, I'll say it now because, you know, when we get the budget, we start to forget about these things. So there is, I think, four, maybe four amendments, as I remember. So there's a bunch still that are coming. But not as important. We took them in the level of importance, so now we're getting to the, the lesser ones. Yes, yeah, so any questions for Wayne? Go ahead. Yeah. Um, I am still struggling with our multimedia system, and I believe everyone on the council is. Um, it's better, but it's still it's not good enough. Um, is there a plan? Uh, I think we're going to have to bring someone in similar to what uh, uh, Bel Air did, and, and let them come in and help us. But we've got to start on it. I see where some immediate uh, improvements could be made at, at very little money, and I want to talk to you about them just because uh, it's a struggle. It's a struggle for all of us, and uh, I, I'm not sure how uh, Council Member Gunn is, is uh, doing on his side. Can you, uh, Council Member uh, Gunn, can you hear us? It's a struggle. It's a struggle. Uh, uh, Since we need to make more improvements, that's a struggle. Yeah, I, I can't hear. I can't. I can't hear a word Glenn Gunn just said. Too loud. Glenn Gunn is talking on the Zoom. He's 10 feet away from me.
Frank can't hear him. He's two feet away from me. I can't hear him. John Hansen is shaking his head from the audience. I can't. Joe Shirley's shaking his head from head in the back of the audience. I mean, well, we're not even holding a good public meeting with this stuff. I mean, everybody has to be able to hear what's going on. It's, it's critical. So. Right. It, it may be upgrading the speaker system. Other things. But you know, I yeah, microphone. Well, we didn't find the one microphone that seemed that it did pick it up a little better. So that that's part of the process too, to buy those. Get rid of these and buy the R type. But we want to find the type that you can push a button to turn it on because the, the one we bought as a test doesn't have a button to it. But it did it pick up. We used it on Vice Mayor over here. It, it did seem to work well, so hopefully that will help part of the system. Any other questions for Lynn? Yes, John. I have two questions. Lynn, I've asked you to, um, have you looked into that light on the end of uh, Donato right there, 22nd, turning it up? Because when you go down 22nd to take a left on Donato, it is so dark and you have to be aware of it. If you just take it like you normally would, you could easily hit somebody. So, can we look? It's the Donato and 22nd, it's the light right, right there. Right there at the intersection. Yes. Yeah, we did turn it up a little bit, but I'm still, we can, we can yeah, come hang out at night and don't walk your dog because you guys will get hit. It's, it's really dark, it's scary. And then second, um, when we were on that Zoom call with the sheriff, Will Terry, I asked him about looking at percentages of use with Bel Air Shore. Did he ever get back to you on that? I've asked him about that a couple times, and uh, I haven't got any response about it other than they, they were going to work on it. Well, it's beyond that. So, uh, what, what, just so the council understands what could happen, he could come back and say, well, we'll just take that deduction out. That's what we have, which is about, I think it was 35,000, if I remember right. Now, the question is that the sheriff's choice, or is that something the council, our council could? I'm asking for point information because I have no idea. I'm not proposing anything. I'm just saying, is that something we could decide to do if we want, or is that something the sheriff has to do to make separate contracts where they do their own stuff, we do our own stuff? And Well, I, I think the feedback from the council would be very important right. to, to give to him and I just don't know who makes that decision well he at the time I guess uh, you know I'm, I'm just speculating at the time uh, the sheriff well I, I know it for a fact at the time the sheriff became our service provider uh, our police department did that service for Bel Air Shore so at the time uh, when the sheriff took over our contract, 2007, I think it was, he gave us a, whatever the number was at that time. He gave us a credit for doing that service as one of our deputies. So, uh, just just asking for your curious. Yeah, I, I've asked Captain Liner a couple of times about that. Basically told me he knows they're supposed to be working on it. The only concern I really have is, are we willing to take if they come back and say, well, if you, you know, on the other side, do you want to take the additional expense and say, don't do anything over there? You know what I'm saying? Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay, we're getting the credit for that police service that they're doing to Bel Air Shore in our contract. If we don't allow our deputy to do that, then we would pay that $35,000 credit. The city would. But isn't Bel Air Shore paying that $35,000? They're so paying it, but it's a credit to our contract. So they pay us, and then we... No, no, they pay the sheriff directly, but the sheriff gives us a credit on our contract of $35,000. Off the bottom line. Off the bottom line, yeah. So, our contract, if they decided not to do that, then we, our contract this year, as an example, would be, if it's uh, right at 5, it would be like 535 or something. 
but I, I can send you that information. I don't understand that. I don't understand why it would go up if you were, you know, they, it should be the same in theory, right? I mean, they're... No, no. They're giving us a credit because they're using our officer to provide that service to Bel Air Shore. So Bel Air Shore is paying the sheriff and we're giving them $35,000 credit. Basically with that contract, our, our time of service, where we were receiving service from the sheriff's department would go up. Yes. Instead of sharing with Bel Air Shore, right. they would be responsible for uh, working out their own contract. Right. And they would be completely separate from us. Is that right? Right. And, and basically what I was told is they just go to the next city and probably give them the credit somehow. So is it a win or not? It's kind of 50 50 iffy. How much impact do we have? Because it's actually working as a sub lease. Right. Ship. So how much are we losing by sub leasing the ship? It, it, it depends on the day and time. I, you really got to look at it. Some some weeks and months, it doesn't really affect us in any way, shape, or form. Now, if there's a call to Bell or Shore and it takes an inordinate amount of time, but you got to understand, the sheriff sends backups, okay, to these situations, whether it's in our city or that city. So uh, it's kind of a what I would call a, a wash in a way, but if you took to the amount of the contract, I think we, we looked at it, it was like 45 minutes per shift, okay, that they should devote. Well, do they devote more than 45 minutes per shift? Maybe Saturday and Sunday they might, but Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, they probably don't, you know, so uh, that's kind of how you got to look at it. Well, that's kind of what I was asking for, is if due to recent issues if more time is being allotted than normal and now the time limit is going up and therefore we're kind of losing out because we're because when they're busy over there dealing with shape they're neglecting speeders over here so that's what i'm curious about if that number amount of time has gone up due to recent issues and if so that's just information we need that's what i was asking the sheriff right so keep up I haven't stopped. Keep up. Any other questions for Wayne? Uh, on the traffic, sir. Uh, I know they're looking at reducing the speed, questioning the speed, and go forward. God bless anyone that lives north of 12th Street, north of Spring Break, and anything like that. I don't know how you get out of your residence. I mean, it's a total mess going up Rock Boulevard and put it on I can tell you how you get out sideways. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I don't know why we can't put it in the pool. Excuse my French. They're called the park lights every now and then. You stop the traffic. Because I think you live there. I don't know how you get out. I don't know how you make a left. I don't know how you make a right. Yeah. Well, that's so, so an hour cap of it. Or, so, I think a couple of park lights, they don't have to be uh, activated at all times. The real problem is not uh, it's not the roads, it's not it's not the sheriff's department, it's the city of Clearwater Beach. They were basically held hostage by the city of Clearwater Beach. You have you have cars back all the way up, non public uh, coming in, they're not coming here, they're passing through. I mean that's what I'm saying, but it impacts anyone from Wall Street. And it's actually now we're starting to come into the new boxes in the back. So, I really think we should be looking at it. Just so you know, um, and I, 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 I knew this, uh, we've seen it. Lynn and I have met twice with the planning people from Nellis. We didn't have that suggestion. I think we threw every other suggestion at them. Um, and, you know, we didn't come away with too much that they were actually able to do for us. They were supposed to be monitoring this light here at the intersection. I was sitting in a 40 minute jam, so I said, well, that was working the other week. And, you know, it was backed up almost to, uh, to the hardware store. It was backed up so far. It was, it was one of the worst I've ever seen. Um, 
I don't know. That might work. I mean, he, Lynn and I have met with this guy, Tom Washburn, a few times. That's what got us that other thing. One of the observations is, and I've actually put myself into the jam a few times just to see what was holding it up. One of the things we found was that a lot of people were slowing down in the real big mansions, the, the baseball players' mansions, stuff like that. And that's why we put that sign there, and hopefully they would actually maintain it. But Winter showed us the results, and they're going slower at the sign because I think they're sightseeing. Because a lot of times it frees up, and the deputies, when I had spoken with them, they were saying it was freeing up after 17th, 18th Street. If we put those in, which is a good idea, the question is, is how much of an effect does it have on people coming over the bridge then? So the, the planners have to tell us that. You know, I mean, it does give us a break. I, I feel for the people, but we we're kind of out of solutions because you know we had talked about doing something with the bridge. It can't be done because it's built with federal money, so you can't do anything to in any way tax people, toll people, anything like that. So that's not happening. We sure as hell can't buy property and make the roads bigger. That's not happening. So I mean, this is, your idea is good if it doesn't back it up even further. But then you talk with Tom Washburn and you took his ideas out there. Like, that light, by the way. I mean, I, I sat in the same traffic jam probably you did. It's 40 minutes. I've been to the last two weekends or two or three times. So it's been, uh, uh, I understand the pain this way. I, I uh, maybe I was lucky, but you know, I, I waited at, uh, let's see, it would be 19th Street, probably five or six minutes one day because I had the deputies doing uh, checking to see if people were sidetracking, you know, going from like uh, Morgan or Hibiscus shooting down. Uh, I haven't got that report yet, but they did do some of that when we came. But I waited three or four minutes, you know, to, to get out to make a left turn. If you made a right turn, did that too. Made a right turn and went down. You got down faster and you made a left turn and went into uh, Morgan Park and came back out. Then you could make a right turn and go back the other way. That's a heck of a way to get around the city, but you know, when you're looking at other issues, I went to the marina here. Down there, it, it does. It does break up. Let me so, add to that just so that we can feel our pain. If we manage to get out, Let's say we want to go to Publix. We may not be able to come home as soon as we get in our car. It may take us 45 minutes to get right. It's relentless. And as far as people exiting their their neighborhood, if we, if we picked on one street and said this is the one that you activate to get out, well now you just you burdened John Hansen Street because I think you volunteered for it. Um, I think he did too. <laughs> but, uh, you tell him. <laughs> basically, you would be following all of the north side traffic down one street, which is going to create another problem. Um, I've also noticed that if there is a gap, if there's a gap at all, and they see you easing up to get ready to leave, they punch you every time. It's 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 a nightmare. And, uh, Turn out of here sometimes. That's it. Well, I, I don't know what the, what the fix is, but um, right now the fix is don't leave after 10 a.m. on a Saturday. Of course, if you do, don't plan on coming back until you know, 5 o'clock. For prisoner food weekend? Yes. Public opens at 7 a.m. I've been there just for that reason to avoid traffic on the way back. No, there's no easy solution, folks. And um, I mean, you know, I'll say I tried. I was personally attacked because I made suggestions with the city manager, and I mean, it was nasty. As if I was going to get bags of money delivered to my house from a toll bridge. Um, we were trying, folks, and, and it turned me off. I got to tell you, okay, some of the stuff that was said. So, um, to paraphrase Barack Obama, you know, if you like the traffic, you can keep the traffic. If you want it fixed, okay, then support the people that are trying to fix it. Don't attack them. Because I don't know that there's an easy solution. Frank has made a good suggestion. I've never heard this before. It should be looked into. But please, don't crucify him if it turns out that it's not good. He's trying. Okay? No, no. We'll, we'll, we'll have another discussion with Tom and see what their thoughts are. Because it, it's a county road. That's, that's part of the whole process. 
you know, love, you know, you can't do anything with that. Uh, both roads are bound to each other. Okay, anyone else? Or Lynn? I, 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 there was a, there's a citizen hand that has a question for you. Good, good, good. John and Jim Vance, go ahead. Okay. Um, I'm sorry, wait. Did I read up? Let's get counsel first. Um, Lynn, I've been getting a lot of feedback noise coming from over there. Is it, are you on Zoom with it? I've got it turned down. So okay. Because I'm hearing everything they say twice. Okay. Well, that's part of the process. Part of the new thing. Okay. I just want to let you know because I didn't know if it was uh, something you could really write in the new. It's beautiful. Okay. Any other council comments before I go to the citizens? Gina, so your hand up first, then John will do you next, okay?
And as of as long as I've been here in the city, that's never been an issue. So I hope that answers the question. If it doesn't, I'm here to answer more. If it does for me, I'm not sure about the rest of the council. I mean, we're both fortunate in both cities. I listen sometimes to down shore meetings, and they have they're equally good crime statistics like us. So it's you know, when we have one arrest, we have no arrests in the city this time. So I mean, it, we're you know we're usually pretty good when it comes to that type of thing. But I think that answered the question as to what happens if there is something at the same time. So, anybody else? Share a thought here. Thank you, Sergeant. I think that takes care of it. Okay. All right. John Hansen. This is for Lynn Reeves now. This is the Lynn Reeves meeting. <laughs> John Hansen, 22nd Street. Um, in the beginning of uh, Lynn's um, briefing, we spoke about the island here at 12th Street and the palm trees that were doing surveys. Maybe the county should consider taking that whole island crosswalk completely out. In my mind, it makes no sense that you have that crosswalk within two blocks of the crosswalk right here at the intersection of Gulf and Bay. That's contributing to back up on the right terms. Not going to solve the problem on the weekends, I guarantee you. And yet, I think I heard a comment about a traffic control device on the weekends, but I can tell you too from personal experience, when I make a mistake of going to Lowe's on a Saturday, it's going to be Christmas. Clearwater Lager Road, from there, over in an hour, all I could see was traffic all the way down Bay. Went over here to 8th Street, from down Indian Bronx, another mistake, backed up there. And then the intersection was a dope rope. I can't use the native terminology uh, because people were sitting in the middle of the intersection trying to make left-hand turns and through traffic couldn't get through. It took over an hour to get home. We have come to the conclusion, my wife and I, we get our stuff done before 10 o'clock on Saturday. And then we stay home the rest of the day on the weekend. And even trying to cross the street for 20 seconds go use the um, access by the motel can be challenging. But then I uh, forget that the next parking lot you got a crosswalk near there and then the next one is way up the street before you get to motor park. So sometimes we get lucky people will stop and let us cross. But I don't know what we can do either. So just make a comment but Take it, take it to the county and ask them what it, about taking out that whole daggum crosswalk there at the, at the parking lot. Well, they're they're looking at uh, their recommendation in this intersection study is even looking at the two left turn lanes to get people at least off the Boulevard on the causeway. But they're looking at they did recommend to take the trees out because of visibility. They are looking at taking the islands out but leaving the crosswalk, which uh, I guess in my mind it would could create a problem for the people on 12th and 13th Street because there's no island there. Because what could happen is the uh, uh, where the island's at, that does stop people from lining up all the way down uh, Gulf Boulevard and making the left turn. Uh, but you know, the, the consultants will look at that and get back to us. But they did re they did recommend that we least leave the crosswalk because there's a lot of activity on 12th Street that goes across to the beach access. Well, one more observation too. You know, recently um, somebody was between 12th and 13th or 14th going to cross Gulf Boulevard with their dogs, I guess, to go to the beach. They did use crosswalk just crossed right there at whatever the side street was. So, you know, some of it's personal responsibility. That's that's true. People cross where there's no crosswalk all the time. Doesn't matter where you're at. It, it can be a Bellard Bluffs, Bellard Beach, Indian Rocks, you know. All of us have driven that way. Think about all the people 
you see going across a street intersection, there's no cross. So that's right. just fine. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Hanzer. Any other citizens? Yes. Uh, Speaking, I'm, I'm, I'm getting signs from the people sitting in the back. They can't hear Mike Kelly's family. Oh, yeah. What did you say, Mark? <laughs> <laughs> like I say, they have better systems at the local bar for the guy who plays guitar. So, yeah, we, we got to do better, really. We're a premier city, right? So, um, yeah. Okay, do you have anything else? No. <laughs> you sure? <laughs> All right. All right, City Clerk, you only have about a 45 minute pres uh, presentation. <laughs> You're good, right? Thanks. Thanks. All right, we move to City Council. Uh, for, the, uh, for the new members, the way I do this is uh, on an even month, I tell you it alphabetically, and uh, Vice Mayor and myself make the last comments, but I go alphabetically, so it's an even month, I start with Robin Hockey, and I'll highway down. Next month, I'll start with the slope and lift highway back up. So this way, you're not always in the same spot. So it is an even month, and Robin Hockey, you're up first. First off, I'd like to say congratulations to Frankie Leslie and Glenn for winning. Happy to serve with you guys. Looking forward to it. Other than that, I think I've already uh, made my comments to Sorry. That's it. Thank you. Frank? Right. Yes, uh, just two things. Um, I know there's litigation between LA Shores and private citizens of LA Beach. Um, Thank you, Matthew. Right that mic. With, with the uh, beach, the beach access. Umbrella shade structure. Um, on March 27th, the sheriff and the deputy came out sitting on the beach with our bank board. Yes. 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 Anyway, Deputy came up and you can see she's in one of these tents, which is no higher than probably two and a half feet up. Okay? It's behind, it's actually lower than the first portion of the seat. So she says, we're going to need to remove that. She's really polite. She said, but that's a shade structure. The child in it is three years old. You can't see the baby, he's six months old. I understand this litigation that uh, this could go on in my opinion for years. I, I would love to see the council get together with the other issues before and try to work something out, get this thing resolved sooner than later. I'm sure there's no residents who want to make a dime on this thing. They just want to go to the beach. If you leave, if you read the two Bellair Shore, Bellair Beach access grant points. I don't think we've done our job um, in the past to keep you know, non-residents out. I think there's a lot of ideas that can come up with. I think Bel Air Shores has got some legitimate complaints about non-residents. I've seen, and I don't, I'm not sure they're Uber drivers, I know they're not my kids because I've seen people 
tip the driver when they get out. I might use that as a tip of my car. But I mean, and they get out and they go on the beach and they, they don't, what I'm trying to say is they don't read the signs. They just go on the beach on growls or whatever. The deputies are overwhelmed. It's not their problem. They patrol a maybe once a weekend. They set up their pick their growlers or whatever, cohorts or whatever, trash the beach, leave. And it impacts the responsible citizens of this town. Okay, because I've got neighbors that don't want to go to the beach because they can't make me a growl. They got no don't know them or whatever. And they know the law. But it impacts us. But you, you come here on Saturday, you'll see cars parked here, they're going to 12th Street, they're going to 6th Street. You see a mayor going down the street. Somebody. And just one other thing, uh, I got a request from a citizen of uh, 102 Fifth Street about the Miami curve is actually sinking a little bit. It's, it's causing a... Uh, is that Sheila? Yes. Yeah, I, I know. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you, Frank. Glenn Gunn. Similar picture, 
And I didn't take this picture, but um, it is um, allegedly one of the council members sitting under a cabana drinking a beer out of a glass bottle from two weeks ago on the beach there. So while the little baby can't shake themselves, they are. It's, it's not a council member. No, no, I'm sorry. It's Bella Shore. Yeah, it's a Bella Shore council member, yes. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, it is not one of our council members. And um, that picture is going to be going around. Uh, and it's just, it's, it's sad. It's just sad. So um, to the extent that people want to do something, they always are trying to work something out. That option is always there. But um, it's getting worse and not better. And, and this, I, I have videos of people, uh, people have sent me videos of people being, um, one person almost got the ticket, um, and it was an eight-year-old girl watching her parents get busted on the beach because he had an umbrella. So I, that's all I'll say about it, because that's, those are facts. I'm not give you any other information, but thank you. Please keep a, keep a watch out. This is not right. Um, I only have one thing, and it's uh, something I just want the city to, under, uh, to know. And, um, I have served for a year now on the mayor's as representative to the emergency services of Pinellas, and um, that's the police, the fire, the ambulance. And uh, at the last meeting, I was elected to the executive board of that. So I'm going to be serving on the executive board for the Pinellas Emergency Services uh, Committee. So uh, that's a big honor for me, and I'm really glad to assume that. And should anybody have any issues with any of our emergency services, police, fire, ambulance, please let me know, because um, I have direct input now to that. Well, I always had direct input now, but I guess I have more input. So um, I'm looking forward to that new role. So I'll be doing that for the next year. Other than that, that's all we have right now. Um, we have a work session coming up on the 26th. That's at 6 p.m. And we'll go back on our regular schedule. And I saw a park we're meeting here on April 14th at 3 p.m. So if you're available for that. Other than that, I will entertain a motion for adjournment. Frank Banker. Second Leslie Matero, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Everyone is opposed. Everyone have a good night. Thank you for coming.